So everybody kept saying, you've got to meet Gina. You've got to meet Gina. And they were telling her, you've got to. So she came home, and then we were met, and then the Lord, through a series of things, sent us out in the ministry as teenage girls. Amazing when I think about it. But you know, I look at some of my pictures and some of the happenings that God did through me, through my childhood, and I thought, you know, they would have called me a child prodigy today. But I didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? I was just living and letting God work. When you give him your life, Gina was baptized in the Holy Spirit at how, what age? Eight. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit at ten, and she was born again at three. I don't even remember being three. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, so I just say that this morning, that you cannot outserve the Lord. It's, it's a foundation for our lives. It's a foundation that we stand on, and, and we're still going today because of that foundation. Amen? Amen. And, I, of course, I want to mention uh, Lois Gibb. I met her in a store. I always love to tell this story, and Dave would have loved it. Her husband, he's already moved to heaven, but I met her. I was working temporarily in uh, J.C. Penney's over in Montclair, and uh, <laughs> brings tears to her eyes <laughs> and a joy because she was the Christian, and she was in that office, and the, the boss, now this is interesting for all of you who know me really well, the boss introduced me as a Lutheran pastor's wife. Because she was Lutheran, and she wanted everybody to know that there was a Lutheran. Well, I was Pentecostal as I came, but <laughs> she didn't know that. <laughs> we had a temporary assignment in a Lutheran church. The pastor wanted uh, people to be there. He wanted somebody on the staff who understood about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And he was reading about it and studying about it. So he hired us as assistant. We were not assistant pastors as we know it assistant to the pastor what whether that makes a difference or not you still do the same thing but because you haven't gone through their uh seminary you're you're not qualified to be called assistant pastor but that's what we were doing so we were assisting the pastor so anyway um lois came and the first day that the thing in the office was that the new girl took got taken out to lunch as an initiation which was nice and so uh, it opened the door for me. My d boss didn't know what she's doing. I remember her name. Do you remember? She was almost comes to me. But anyway, she was really neat. But uh, so Lois, it was Lois's turn to take somebody to lunch. So we go to the cafeteria that's there in the mall, the Dutch or whatever it was. It was something. It was nice. And she said, uh, and we're standing in line getting our food in the cafeteria. And she said, you know, I have got something that I need help with. And I said, yeah. She said, maybe you can help me. She said, my husband's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, this is funny. <laughs> she said, I said, well, why is he crazy? What makes you think he's crazy? He speaks in tongues. <laughs> I looked at her. I thought, oh, Lord, do I let the cat out of the bag or what? <laughs> She's going to think I'm crazy now, and I just met this lady. <laughs> so I turned and looked at her, and I said, Lois, I speak in tongues. And she didn't turn me off. Thank you, Jesus. Make a long story short, Lois spoke in tongues, too. <laughs> and we had some of the most wonderful times in that store. We would laugh. The laughter of the Lord would come on us. I remember one day, one night, we had a meeting, and, and Ray Brooks, I don't know if any of you have heard of him or not, he was a Catholic, spirit-filled Catholic, and he came to our home in Glendora. And uh, the Spirit of God moved so strong in the house that you could feel the glory of God. Well, Lois and I got to work the next morning on Saturday. So we go in there, and the laughter and the joy of the Lord had hit us in the meeting at our house. She and I, she finally said to me, Rachel, you're going to have to leave the office so I can finish our work. <laughs> because
because the joy, as soon as we get together, the laughter of the Lord would hit us. And we were getting paid for the hour, by the hour. <laughs> and I would go, <laughs> you know, you sort of snort because you're trying to keep from laughing. <laughs> but it was, the, it was so supernatural. Need, needless to say, we got the work done. And I did work between giggles. But it was just a supernatural thing. And one day there was a guy, and I know I, I'm writing a book this morning. But there was a guy that, he was known to have the nastiest mouth in the place. And no, none of the women, and I wasn't aware of this, I thank God for innocence. None of the ladies would get on the elevator with him. As soon, I noticed that as soon as he got on the elevator, there was like an accident. But I never got off. I just always stayed. Didn't know why they got off. I thought, they're not, they're not where they're supposed to be going, but they'd leave. So... Anyway, one day that guy, I'm trying to think how this opened. Oh, he brought me something because I started talking to him about the Lord. And, uh, or just talking to him as a human more than, more than anything. So one morning he brings me this egg. I don't swear that thing was that big around. It was a goose egg. And he said he wanted me to have that. So I took it home and the next morning I had the goose egg for breakfast. So I thought, Lord, what can I take to John? His name was John. What can I take to John that will uh, speak to him? I don't have any farm animals or anything that I can, you know, reproduce in something like that for him. So a, a light came on my head. Give him a four spiritual law booklet. So, oh, okay. So I took the four spiritual law booklet, and he sees me at the time clock that morning, and I said, John... I don't have an egg. I don't have any of those farm things like you brought me. But here is what I have for you today. And I handed him for a spiritual law book. He held it up and screamed out in front of everybody. That's an answer to prayer. I've been asking God to give me knowledge about this. So I go into the office and tell Lois, we got to go pray for John. <laughs> Well, we'd already agreed in prayer with him a couple, a couple times in the mornings because I'd ride with her. We were neighbors in Glendora. So this is a history lesson. Are, am I boring you? No. So God is wonderful, what I'm trying to say to you. He's, he'll take you for a ride if you'll go. <laughs> so he's been taking us for a ride for a long time. So we had already agreed uh, that he, we would pray for him, but... I think Lois wasn't sure that John could get saved. <laughs> and I said, well, I just believe he will. <laughs> to make a long story short, he got gloriously saved. The boss comes walking in and sets himself. Do you remember that big boss? When John got saved, he, he, was, he was already ready mouthy. So he goes and tells everybody. I slept tonight for the first time in 20 years. I haven't been able to sleep. And he, took, he, had, he had really about to have a breakdown, I think. So he came to his boss and said, that woman in the front desk in the accounting office saved me last night. <laughs> he had come to our home and prayed for the Lord. We'd invited him to our home. And, of course, I had to set the record straight that it wasn't me, but it was Jesus that came into his life. So we began to disciple him as much as we could, and I need a tissue because I'm between laughing and crying. So. so that's our story, and it could go on and on, but especially when one day we went to San Diego, <laughs> and, and uh, Dave was on oxygen, <laughs> and we were sitting there at a Spanish restaurant, and he said, Rachel, I know what we can do because he's always being funny, but he could always create a ministry for me. And said, I know what we should do. We should start a rest home. It's called, it's going to be called the second wind. <laughs> I said, well, you come up with the most wonderful ideas. <laughs> so it was just funny. It tickled my bone. <laughs> so it, it's, I could tell story after story after story, but I'll hush and move on. <laughs> And then I believe I met Diane next. And it has been a long time. 
and she came to our church in Indio when Baba Jean Merck was there, and because of, what was the song? Not because of who I am, but because of who he is or something like that. Do you remember the title of it? Anyway, it was an awesome song, and the glory came down in the church. And anyway, back and forth for many years that, you know, we would, and I remember coming up to Crestline. I remember the rain, but I remember one morning that I came and remember my accordion, you were in a house. And I brought my accordion, and the glory of God came in, and people were born again right before we could ever hardly say anything because of the praise and worship. Church, I believe in the praise and worship of the Lord. Amen. We don't realize the power we tap into when we get into real, true praise and worship. It's life-changing. You never want to back away from it. Uh, you just always want it to be a part of your life and take that anointing. Anyway, Lois, I forgot to say, she has her daughter Bonnie with her this morning. So uh, Bonnie came to our house as a little girl and was with our children. And so it's just history here this morning. And then I met Betsy Jeffers, which I thank the Lord. Does everybody know Betsy? Why don't you stand a second? You do. She'll just wave. <laughs> So I met, I met her through another friend and, and began to speak for some of the ladies' meetings that she had. And I believe you were in some of those too, Diane. And uh, anyway, the Lord really bonded our hearts together, and John now has moved on to be with the Lord um, as of last year, wasn't it? And I so badly wanted to come out here during this time of that they were standing together and for his healing, believing that he was going to be raised up. And we were fighting. But you know, some, and it's good to fight. Amen. You know what? You're going to have to die in faith. You live in faith, and you're going to meet the Lord in faith. So faith is never wrong. No, That's Are you hearing me? Amen. When my mother, 92 was going to be with the Lord. I had to have faith continually uh, because I had to pray according to how God had told me to pray. That's where we miss it sometimes. We don't take time to listen. And including, you know, how many fingers come back when you point yours. But the Lord had spoken to me like two years before and two or three years before and said to pray for her to have a peaceful journey home. And that wasn't because of her age I was praying that, because I expected, Mom, she was tough. I mean, at 89 years old, she picked up a television for one of the elderly ladies in the complex where she lived and took it down to Walmart and got a refund for her because the thing wasn't working. That's the kind of woman my mother was. A snake was up in the tree when we were children. She went and got the gun and came out and killed it. So I came from hard stock, <laughs> tough stock. She, she uh, you know, you didn't want to miss, mess with Sarah. If she's hearing this this morning, Lord, let her laugh. But <laughs> anyway, it was, it was listening to God. So I, the Lord said that the journey, to pray for her to have a peaceful journey. You know, I, I didn't know how much that was going to mean, that prayer. Because there were so many things that rose up. But one of the neighbors said to me, you know, Rachel, you need to go to the nursing home and teach them how to take care of people when they're dying. We kept 24-hour praise and worship around her. We kept the word of God. I'd change it every once in a while. But when mother would get so agitated, I would put my new CD in called Amazing Love, and I'd sit down and we'd begin to sing together. She and I would just sing, and the nurses would say, and they told each other, if she starts to get agitated, put amazing love on. Put Rachel's CD on, and Gina's on that CD with me. And uh, put that on, and Gina came to help me with my mother. I've got wonderful friends here this morning. You're, you're the family of God. And this, 
you know, it, it's just awesome. So our God is awfully good. Yes. Hallelujah. So we live in faith. We die in faith. You, you don't want to go the way the doctors are saying you're going to go. By the way, it ain't over, honey. Diane, it's not all. It's not over. I was you standing up here, those words broke up inside of me, rose up. It's not over. Tell her it's not over. <laughs> it's not over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that new anointing. That new anointing. I speak strength into her body this morning. In Jesus' name, and, and new, new mental uh, strength. And I speak to the ears in Jesus' name. And I speak to the voice. You're not going to rob it. In Jesus' name, we're not going to allow it. We stand around her. We unite together. And we thank you, Father, for your joys, her strength. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. And Lois is not over. <laughs> She's been tested the last few months, too. So God is so good to every one of us. But you listen to the Lord, and, and you, you, you leave this earth in faith. The doctors would tell me that my mother was probably going to drown in her own liquid in her body, and it would not be a good situation. But I said, no. She will just peacefully go to be with the Lord. And my brothers would say, but you know what a fighter she is, Rachel. You're not going to get that because mom will fight to the very last breath and the doctors have said she's going to choke. Da, da. I couldn't argue with them. I just had to get with God and say, no, it isn't going to be that. Lord, you heard what they said and I just cancel it because they'd start arguing with me then. But I, of course, I would say back to them something because I had to, you know what I'm saying? I don't let you bow me over if I can keep from it. <laughs> so anyway, when, when mother went to be with the Lord, the peace of God. Now, there were some challenging times, some very challenging times. I can't tell you there was, it, but there was, but God, but God. Every time I'd think I couldn't make it another breath, he would send somebody. One morning, one night, I had been with mother, all night, and she, she was not doing well. And, and uh, then I said, Lord, I need help. So I, I'm one of those people who try to fight it through without calling for help. But she was on hospice, so finally I called hospice and said, I, I can't go another step. I've got to have help. And I said, Lord, I wish you would send that godly man that she calls a doctor. He's not a doctor, but she thought he was. He was a nurse. Well, I didn't request him, you know, because I know they've got their schedules and stuff. Well, in comes walking this guy, and he could walk in. He was full of the word. Every, host, every person that came to help me to take care of my mother was full of the word of God. One girl came. She wasn't saved, I don't believe, but she, got, she was in trouble very much, and I ministered to her. And she got in trouble with us. I hated to have to turn her in. But, you know, some things are serious. You just have to. But I'll never forget her because she got in my heart. And I prayed for her, and I still do. And she wanted, she wanted her, her uh, agency that she worked for to allow me to counsel her. But, of course, that was too much at that time. You know, sometimes you're just on overload in yourself. And, and they, they requested I not do it. They said, we would prefer that you didn't do it, but you insist that she gets help. I said, by all means, I've got my hands full with my mother. So, you know, I insist that she get help. So God is good. Amen. He's tattooed you, and I don't like tattoos. I'll just say it right now. If you're here with them, I love you anyway. But you're beautiful without artwork. That's what I always say. So I'm not against you if you're, I'm teasing you, but there are t we are put in his hand. He's in, we're imprinted, and that, that word tattoo is a close simile so that we can understand what I'm saying. We are tattooed in his hand. We are imprinted in his hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made this morning. God has got plans for you. 
He wants to touch your life every single day. Oh, I tell you, he's a great, big, wonderful God. He's a great, big, wonderful God. We praise him this morning. Let's just lift up our hands and give him glory. Father, you've just been so wonderful to all of us. We call for the ministering spirits this morning to minister to your church as you've already been doing. I thank you for setting your people free this morning, letting them know how much you love them, how much you appreciate their respect toward you. And Father, we just honor you this morning and thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. And Bonnie, you can do it. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. He is here to strengthen you today and to lift you up. Could you mind come and let me lay hands on you? I could come to you, but I'd have to reach out your hands toward her, would you? Thank you, Lord. We bring her to you this morning, Lord. She needs the anointing to touch her. We thank you for restoring body in every area of her life. Taking her back in your arms this morning and letting her know how much you love her. I speak your peace to her. I thank you for a new anointing rising up in her. And devil, I take authority over you. In Jesus' name, you harassing spirits, trying to break her down mentally and weary her in body. In Jesus' name, we break every demonic assignment in Jesus' name, we call this family. This mom has stood for these children and for this grandchild. We speak that the angels of the Lord are in attendance and we call them all, son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, everybody. We break every situation that would try to hinder them in the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, Rabaharia, Vasita, Rabakadia. You, you honor those prayers that have been prayed, Lord. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love you, honey. Hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> Glory to God. How many would like to see my trip to Africa? Yeah, I've got some things back there. I hope I get to preach this morning. But we won't worry about it. On my computer, Matt, where it says uh, the numbers that Gina gave you, okay, did I tell you to go to uh, oh, pictures from tablet, yes, and those numbers. I think there some of these are maybe better ones, but we may do some of the others too. Uh, I, don't written, I haven't written down what they are, and my ears still aren't big enough. At this point, we won't believe God for him to get bigger, that's for sure. Just take it off. Just, just take it off, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to have to turn and look so I can tell you what's happening here. So just go with the one. I sort of put them in order as we selected them. So the ones that she handed you from my computer. Okay, this. Sorry, the pastor's head is turned. That's. That's not the one. But anyway, this is the crowd of the church where I went. Having trouble what? Are not the same? Okay, we'll just go the best we can, all right? But anyway, the pastor, even though he's, there we are. We were trying to get all these people together. This is the congregation, and if I could have figured out which one was a video, 
they were screaming to the top of their voices, or not screaming, but saying really as a corporate body, thank you for sending Rachel. So it was a real blessing. But some people say, well, how did you find out about this ministry? The Holy Ghost was building a platform from the time this pastor was like three or four years old. He lived in Diamond City. I mean, not Diamond City, Diamond Bar. We have a Diamond City back there. So Diamond Bar, he lived in Diamond Bar. His mother and his aunt, um, his mother and his grandmother, his grandmother was a administrator of a hospital. And uh, at night, she, in, in the daytime, you remember who it is, Lois, Pat Buckley. This is her son. So they would bring the, the team or their staff to their home in the daytime, and we would go do a Bible study with them. And all of them got born again. But it was his, mo his grandmother who was the real missionary and his mother. So I've known him since he was a child. And the young woman that's standing behind him, that's his, his wife. And I went to North Dakota to minister in this one church. I probably went 50 times. I don't know. If I wish I'd have kept better records. But she was growing up, and she was probably about 9 or 10 when I first started going there. So they come to Rama in Tulsa, both of them, and young people, 18, 19, 20, something like that, meet each other, and he said to her, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? And she said, I'm going to a couple's house named Bob and Rachel. He said, Bob and Rachel? You mean Bob and Rachel Jeffries? He said, yes. And they both knew us. So I tell you, the Lord's always writing a story. That's what I spoke for the Bible school. So I was invited. Oh, it's a story. Oh, goodness sakes. It needs to be a book. How did this come about? Because I keep, people ask me this all the time. How did this connection come? Well, it was started many, many years ago without me knowing it. But I was in a meeting, and a word of knowledge came through, a man of God. And he said, by Christmas, you're going to be blessings to you and your church. Amen? So he said, by Christmas, you're going to be, he prayed for strength for me. He said, by Christmas... This year, that was September when he was speaking to me, you're going to be very busy for the kingdom of God. On November the 1st, now listen to this. November the 1st, the pastor was from this, from Africa, was in, in Branson, and we went out to dinner with his uh, in-laws, or good friends of mine, and we were sitting at the table, and he said, Rachel, we want you to be the commencement speaker for our Bible school and I said, I was thinking June, you know, May or June. I said, well, when is it? He said, this month. I said, this month? I'm still in October mentally, you know. October 31st and the 1st of November. This month. And reality hit me. And, you know, I knew that God wanted me to do it. But there, once he tells you to do something, there can be things that arise to challenge it. You got to be sure that that's what he wants you to do. So some things arose. First of all, how are you going to go financially? And people around me who love me ha know I have a tendency to just say, okay, I'm going. And God has to get me there and back. You know, I just always done that. Lois just used to keep the books, she knows. So I said, how are you going to go How the financially? And then how are you you're going to... Who's going to be with you? That's 22 hours in the air. Well, I don't think about all that stuff too much. So others have to help me. <laughs> so needless to say, God started unraveling it and working it out. And I, I went back to the Lord and said, okay, Lord, show me. I want you to show me. I want you to reaffirm to me I'm on the right track with this appointment. Because you can get words from the Lord and it not be the same door. This could have been a door, but not the door. You understand what I'm saying? But in my heart, in my spirit, I knew it was the door the Lord had been preparing me for. So I said, okay, we'll ask the Lord. And I was on my way to church one day. The Holy Spirit quickened to me. He said, 
I have not forbidden you to go to Africa. I've had that scripture where they had forbidden, you know, Paul, they had forbidden, I don't remember who all was, it, disciples had been forbidden to go to Asia, I believe. Where? You just came from, yeah. So anyway, I had that scripture, and I, oh, are you forbidding me to go? And then this little voice from the Holy Spirit in presence said, I have not forbidden you to go to Africa. So tomorrow, as far as I was concerned, it was settled. And then I stood on the scripture that no soldier goes to war at their own expense. So God started sending the funds. I'm getting ready to get on the plane. The funds didn't seem to be there. And I said, I kept standing on that scripture that a no soldier goes to war at their own expense. I just kept saying, you don't send me away empty-handed, Lord. Well, an offering had been received by the ministry there in Branson area, Billy Brim's ministry, and I didn't know it because I wasn't there that last Sunday because I was getting ready to leave on, like, Monday. So I had to get myself <laughs> in line. So God, I thought, how am I going to get these clothes packed? There was just overwhelming stuff. He started sending the people to help me get packed, to get me organized, to get me there. And then he sent a young woman, and somebody paid her way to go with me. <laughs> Round trip. And I'll show you her picture in a few minutes. She, we, she got cut off in this photo. So uh, what's the next one? Okay, these are a lot of those. Yeah, that was her on the right. Brooklyn, and she had graduated from Rama Bible Training Center uh, in praise and worship. And to come think about it, we met in the airport. I had not met her that I knew, but she came by high recommendation of the pastors in Africa because they knew her since she was a baby. I was not aware I knew her at all, didn't recognize the name or anything. We get in the airport, leaving from Springfield, Missouri. They drove her out from Tulsa. I meet the family, and I'm looking at them, and I'm going, I know you guys. I just know I know you. And we're trying to figure it out. And they said, well, we were at this missionaries that you saw. We were at their wedding when you and your husband helped with the wedding many years ago. And I said, but there's more to it than that. I, I believe you. We, we were there at the same time, but there's more to it. And we got to talking. They used to own a restaurant in Tulsa, and we would go there to eat at that place. And he loved missionaries, and he would come and sit at our table and talk to us, the Father. So these divine connections, it, you can't figure these things out. Walking in the Spirit is, is an awesome thing. Hallelujah. So uh, did I point out to you what, oh, this, yeah, that's, that, this was a doctor, doctor and his wife's family, and the lady on the back, Standing next to him, of course, is Juliana. You talk about a blessing, and that's Ida holding my hand. The pastor said in 27 years of being there, they had never had the people open their homes to any of anybody who came. But it was a God thing. They invited me into their homes. They uh, came over to visit with me. Every time they would come, the Holy Ghost would come. And we would just listen to the Lord and we'd sit out under the shade, which we can hopefully show you in a few minutes. And this was a village church. This pastor on my right, yeah, on your right, my right, uh, that's Pastor Sylvia, wonderful, wonderful lady of God, owns a business of uh, party, like party items, you know, but rental service, very high class stuff. And she was just a beautiful lady. And the other lady is her assistant pastor, and that's Pauline. You talk about what a blessing those two ladies were. And they are so dedicated to the Lord. She started a church out in the village with, you'd have to see it. But they were sweet, sweet people. And I could go on about that. So this is Juliana. She was, she was assisting me. She always met me at the door. They would have, they were in a big land cruiser, you know what that is? And I couldn't hardly get out of it because I hardly get out in it and could hardly get out of it. But they always had a stool there for me like Otto does. And, and I would step down and they would, she'd be right there, take my Bible, she'd take my purse, she took 
charge of everything, took me by the arm, took me to the platform. She was, uh, she was my guardian angel the whole trip. Oh, yes, forgot to tell you. Boats, they call it, I called it Botswana, but it's Botswana. B, it's spelled B-O-T, but it's pronounced Botswana. And it's not, it was eight hours north of, of uh, South, of uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. So that was an event in itself. As we were driving, this is still the village. This is one of the visit, vi village ladies. And, uh, and there's the ladies, and they call them the Golden Girls. Some of the ladies, <laughs> it was a team of ladies, and they were so sweet, and they gave me a present that was... Uh, a bowl that was made out of recycled plastic bags. Beautiful thing. I wouldn't have never dreamed that's what it was. But it was really beautiful. And they, that's a gift they gave. And there's sister, there's Pastor Sylvia interpreting for me. And this is the praise team. Now we're back in the church that where we all saw all the people. This is where I went to do the, the commencement. And see how they have it decorated? They had a Christmas party. Uh, our candlelight dinner for the ladies. You should have seen it. The pastor's wife, I'm, she's just amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. She had enough settings from her own house with silverware and plates and everything for 60 people. But the rest, we needed 65 more. So the other ladies pulled everything together and they decorated the tables. So that's why all that greenery is there and everything. And that was the translator for the, one of the Sunday morning services, or the interpreter. Um, and that's another one. Of the, see those things on the side? Now, that's an outdoor building. That's the church. This is a, a, what we would call a pavilion at a park. But it has a roof. And these sides are Velcroed on. And so they would let them, they would close out the sun when they needed to, and they'd let the, the wind in when we needed to, so they could just unvelcro them. It was interesting. So here's the dinner. See the plates and everything? So they had to decorate. And this is us overlooking the city. This is Brooklyn, the pastor's wife, Kristen, and myself. And we were overlooking the city of Francistown. And uh, they took me up on this high place. And, uh, and we could, we could see out over the city. And, of course, that thrills me because I love and being in high places and speaking to the enemy and say, uh-uh, no, no, no. We, we call for, it was over 100,000 population. And this was the Bible school students. So I spoke for, I got there on like a, I got there Thanksgiving Day. We arrived, the journey up there was very interesting. I wondered why the pastor was in such a hurry to get home. I mean, he drove like he was a race car driver. I always call him his second anointing is a race car driver. I wondered why he was rushing so. I said, I want to take a picture of that palm tree. Well, you'll see a lot of them. So I said, <laughs> see, anyway, <laughs> it reminded me of California. So interesting things happened on that journey. We're driving, al we're driving along. And the pastor said, do you want to go the back way or you want to go the front way? I said, well, I want to see the country. I should have never said that. <laughs> so he takes me, starts to take us the back road so I can see the country really well. And we get up there a little ways, and he said, this has never happened. There was some people, first they were burning tires in the middle of the road. You could see the smoke bellowing. And he said, oh, I forgot there's a strike in this area. And they had something to do with the trash people or something. So he turned us around real quick to not go that way. And when we did, we ran into people who were throwing bricks at cars. This guy has, one guy has a rock. This part I didn't see, but they told me about it. And I know it's true because you could see them all around us. They had bricks and rocks. And this one young man went to throw, and he did hurl it, but it dropped right at his feet. Another one, I looked up and saw him, and he was getting ready to hurl a brick right into the pastor's wife's side of the car. 
And I said, oh, no, devil. No, you don't. Pastor said, we've been here 27 years. This has never happened. He said, well, Rachel, I guess the devil knows you're here. I said, well, yes, the blood of Jesus is over everything. He will not hinder us. Devil, I'm letting you know right now, the word of God is here, and you're not hindering our progress. So I saw they couldn't get the brick out of their hand. And I believe an angel helped turn that land cruise around because when the way he turned around, there was not enough room to turn around, and yet he did it. He turned that thing around so quick and headed us back, and we were able to stop a, a lot of other people who were headed that way. They didn't want what they called foreigners because they, this was in South Africa, and we were from Botswana, and the tags on the car showed that we were from Botswana. And they didn't, even though we were a neighboring country, they didn't want us there. So needless to say, God had his way anyway. And this 22 graduates, so we were ministering to the, to the graduates of the Bible school. And the Lord gave me the sermon, God is writing your story. That was a sermon that he gave me for that commencement. God is writing you and my story this morning. Through, the f through everything, every good thing that's happened, every bad thing, how you handle the bad things. God saw you. He heard the cry of your heart, how you didn't feel like you could go another step. But you had faith in him and his strategies, and he worked through the whole thing. Amen? Sometimes you can't see it when you're on top of it. Have you ever been on too, too close to see something? You, but you get behind it, and you look back, and you see how God's hand was so strong for you. All of you, most of you know, my husband went to heaven through a trauma. And uh, I remember the night that I cried out to the Lord so strong. I knelt, not knelt, but bent over his re recliner that I had just bought him for his birthday, and I, I cried out to God for him. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me so gently, let him go now and let me have him. And when he said that, I knew God had spoken to me. I won't say I didn't pray for him ever again, but the burden of trying to spare his life was lifted I was fighting for everything. I'm a fighter. God has to pull me off because you don't want me there if you want to go to heaven because I won't let you <laughs> if I can keep from it. <laughs> you know, if I can keep you from it. But if you've made that decision, you're going to go. I can't do anymore. And inward decisions are people, things that people make that we don't know about. Amen? And sometimes we're fighting for something that somebody has willed to, to do differently. Yes. Am I making sense? Because yes. God has given us a will. But, uh, of course, that was uncomfortable, to say the least. But God walked me through it, and today I'm freer than I've ever been. I just love God more than I've ever loved him. He has blessed me more than I've ever been blessed. I mean, he's just poured out his love on me in so many ways that I can't even fathom all of it. When he blessed me with a new house, that was a miracle in itself last year, and I think I told you about that. But it's only the miracle. I'm on the teeter end of coming to California again because I, like I said, I call it my first love. I was on the edge of coming back, thinking that that may be what the Lord wants. So I'm seeking his face and then he showed me that he wanted me there. And there has been miracle after miracle. Obedience is not always comfortable. And he showed me he, he wanted me there. And so it was just like so many things have broken loose that I've been able to get done. I still come out here every few months because that's what another thing the Lord has, has spoken to me to do. So you just listen to his voice. Amen. Okay, I'm now get, get on to the African trip, sorry. So there I am speaking for the Bible school. And this is the pastor myself and his wife. And I've actually, they're both pastors just like you. Both are here. Um, and this is the Bible school graduation again, I believe. So speaking. So, and there's the, the people that came. So this is uh, out of being there for three weeks, 
I had one and a half hours to go shopping in three weeks. My schedule was completely busy with the work of the Lord. So this was one of the days. We didn't even get to go shopping this day, but they took me to the Nelson Mandela uh, shopping mall in Johannesburg as we were getting ready to go on the plane. So this is what this is about. There's a big monument there. You can see how tall it was and see how little we were. So, and this was uh, another place that took us the night before. They just wanted me to see things and enjoy things before I went home. So they took me on a trip at the end of the journey. I went into a shop. To, I had 35 minutes. The pastor, I felt like I was on a tour. The pastor said, we got 35 minutes, Rachel, for you to shop because we want to go on the boat cruise that we missed yesterday. And we were in another country at that point. We were in Zimbabwe. And I know how long it takes to get through customs. You go through at least three or four stations before you get out of the country. And as you're going in, you go in through several. They double check you and double check you and double check you. You have to stick your feet down in a sanitizer to be sure that you don't take anything in from another country. So they protect their cattle. By the way, all their, all their, all their steaks and everything was organic. They don't sell anything inferior, which is amazing. So this was another spot they took us before we were going to leave. Isn't that beautiful? You wouldn't think, a lot of people think Africa, and they think that everything is so deprived. Well, not everything is. You see, like the little village that I went to, you know, that was something, because you saw the pigs walking around, and you saw the donkeys and the cows. And anyway, the going on that journey that night, I was going to tell you, there was baboons that came out into the road. There was donkeys walking the white line. There was everything. There was, there was uh, zebras. Excuse me, there was elephants, and I hope I get around to show. Excuse me, that elephant that crossed in front of us. Okay. So uh, this, I think we've shown all of that one. Okay. Uh, is this one from my computer? Okay. Okay. That's all the Bible school stuff again, but I'm sorry, the numbers didn't match. It's my fault. But that's some of the oranges that was in one of the people's home that are in their yard that invited me over. So, okay. Uh, I don't know if you see the missionary home. So, sorry I'm not showing you exactly what was happening, but that was a beautiful door of their house, carved wood. So, that's her kitchen, so... You know, so many things are similar to ours, but I won't belabor it because I wasn't able to get this all organized. Like I said, I'm learning media, forever learning media. But the, the peaceful place that they took me, and that's on there somewhere, was a beautiful home. They had 11 or 12 bedrooms. It was like a dorm. And this little couple that I worked with had... When they were first there, they slept in tents. They did their itinerary in the U.S. and in Africa by hitchhiking, or he did. He would hitchhike because they didn't have a car. And she said the first trip her mother came to see her, her mother could hardly keep it together because of the poverty that she saw her daughter living in. At 22 years old, you can imagine. They're hitchhiking, living in tents, they don't have a decent car, but they knew God called them to Africa. And they knew that he called them to Francistown, Botswana. And they stood, and today there's that 11-bedroom house. It's beautiful. It's so peaceful there. And the dogs loved me. Everybody knows that. I love dogs, and so they love me. But there was two great big German shepherds, and when I'd have to go to the restroom in the middle of the night because it was in another building, the dogs would follow me and watch over me until they got used to me being safe and uh, they wouldn't do it anymore. I said, oh, you little guys, you're going to sleep on the bit on the... That's him. Yep, that's one of them. I forgot the name. He, there was two of them. And uh, they were father and daughter, I think, or something like that. And so anyway, they were great big old German, German shepherds and they guarded. That's the, that's the restroom. That's, see the openness? The showers where those curtains are? And you see all those trees in the back? Well, that's 
many things would fall out of those trees down into <laughs> You didn't know what you were going to meet. I've never been able to be in the same room with lizards, but I had to get comfortable with it <laughs> because they were in my bedroom. <laughs> and I said to the pastor's wife, I don't want them in there. She's, I was going to stomp my foot and keep them from out going in. She said, oh, Rachel, you'll be grateful. They eat the bugs. <laughs> so I slept on the mosquito net. I said, I don't want them in the bed with me. She said, I've been in here 27 years, and I've never had one get in the bed with us. But they climb the walls. You'll see them. You'll be sitting there studying, and all of a sudden, up the brick wall goes uh, a lizard over to the living room. So anyway, there was no ceiling. There was only roofs. And this is the entrance to the, to the restrooms. The left men are the women, the went left on the, on the men and right on the women. So I can't tell what that is. Oh, that's the Thatcher Ruth house. I don't know if we can turn. There it is. That's the, that's the house. See the thatched roof? So, and this is the trees. And this is the peaceful place where I stayed for three weeks. Isn't that beautiful? It was, um, they, had, they had attenders, you know, people attending it, the grounds. But um, there we were. We went one day into town, no shopping. Just getting, they took me to an ice cream shop because everybody knows that's my thing. <laughs> so they took me to ice cream. So that's what that was. And I will, I will just turn it off. I wanted to show you that elephant. Can you find the elephant? He crossed in front of us in the road. <laughs> or <laughs> we saw him headed toward, and he, he, I, was, I couldn't believe how fast they could walk. So we, Pastor pulled over immediately because. You know, we didn't want to hit it for sure, even though we felt like it was far enough away from us. The next thing you know, he's, gonna, he's walking toward us. So the pastor pulled over the road, and he turned around and looked at us, and, and I wanted to say he smiled. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and here's this big elephant. I hope I'm not boring you with this this morning. But God moved. Let me tell you the story about God moving. Because if he finds the elephant, you can see it. You can see we're in the car and elephants crossing right in front of us. God was so precious in the people's lives. I just loved them. I, I just fell in love with them. I thought, you know, if I was 22, I'd stay here too. Because their openness to the Lord and they, they hung on every word. The pastor's wife said to me, your age is to your advantage. They honor age here. And they feel like you've got something that they haven't been able to live out yet. And she said, they will get everything from you we can. And so I had mentoring meetings. I had church meetings. I had evangelistic meetings. And four churches was been born out of that one church. And by the way, I'm getting ready to go to Lillehammer, Norway. Four churches have been born out of Lillehammer. I'm going March the 14th. So I'll appreciate your prayer support. And I'll just say this while I'm thinking about it. Gina, my dear friend here, has made a beautiful CD. It's called Praise Me and I'll Rain My Glory Down. And that one song that she wrote is a prophetic song. It's on her CD. And she's playing good old hymns and things that we all love beautiful beautiful music peaceful and if you know somebody that needs to be lifted up you will be deeply encouraged by it so she's saying anybody that wants those today she's getting a sale two for 25 dollars one for 15 and then my cd so anything that comes in today through the books and the CDs, we're going to apply toward the Nor Norway trip is what, what I'm saying. But they'll help you back there at the table. So um, God is good. He kept, why at 76 all this is opening? I feel like it's an ambassadorship. They need to know how God has blessed me since they last saw me. They need to see that I'm not sitting over in a corner crying. I am not bent over with sorrow, with uh, things that have happened in my life. I didn't get to go back right away, and I, I'm not sure I know all the reasons why, 
But the Lord did speak to me, and he said, I want you to build a strong found. That was the word that Brother John gave me, your husband, Betsy, said to me, God wants to build a strong foundation. It's like I was doing the work of 100 people and I, before when I was, you know, going into these places. Not that many, but, you know, evangelists sort of exaggerate. But at least five or ten. <laughs> And I, w I got wore out. Oh, there the elephant. <laughs> it was the biggest thing I'd ever seen. It was, it, he looks bigger than that, actually. I, I couldn't get my tablet ready when he was right in front of us, you know, trying to get the camera going. That's how fast he walked. So that's, that's the one. So anyway, I s saw a lot of history as I've traveled. But I, the Lord has helped me to not be so sorrowful. And I have a ministry now that he's opened called With Us With Purpose. And last night he spoke to me because I said, Lord, I'm writing blogs every day trying to touch the lives of widows. And he's began to speak to me. And he said, I want you to enlarge the vision. I don't just try to do things in my own mind because I have a mind that can race 100 miles an hour and I can't keep up with it. But he said, I want you, to, and Gina and I talked about it this morning or yesterday, I'm not sure. And I began, pray, began to pray and said, we want to pray and see what the Lord wants to do with this. And he said, I want you to start saying, helping widows around the world. You know, so many times widows are left in the church, really doesn't mean to, but we have youth groups, we have this, we have that, we have that and the other, but you don't hear about the support for the widows. And in, in our nation, we think that every widow has been left rich. It's not true. You know, you may be left with something, but it's not enough to carry you for years and years and years because most women outlive their husbands by a long time. So, fellas, if you're here this morning, make provisions. I've seen God do that for some of the widows. That, that the Lord really blessed them in a special way, and they were a blessing to the kingdom. But I'm meeting widows who do have purpose, and it's called Widows with Purpose. They are moving on. I wrote an article this week about moving on. And you have to move on. You can't stay back there. And naturally, it's going to hurt. Your soul is attached with the other person's soul, and you miss them. You were one in the flesh. And so you're going to miss them. It's, it's just the way it is. But God can put you in a bubble and take you through it. Amen? And sometimes it would hit me so hard when, when my husband passed. And it would hit me. And I would have to, I would just have to cry it out, I guess you might say. I'd get on my knees and commit things to God over and over and over. And let him touch the pain of my heart. And so um, I tell you today, if you let him, he will touch you in a special way. Amen? And now I'll get around to preaching if we have time. Two minutes. All right, I think we've already preached. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I sing a song then? <laughs> oh, we don't have the CD. Oh, Lord. You know, how many remember that song? The CD, actually, that I have back there is called Amazing Love. And I had one that I used just for this, and I assumed you had one and didn't think about bringing it that was already open. So I'm so limited on them, I, I wouldn't want to open one, I guess, is what I'm saying, because if somebody wants to get it, you might not want a used one. Would you forgive me if I open one? We'll give you $5 off. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's go with the one that Gina recorded, and it's on mine and hers, number seven, I believe. Praise me, and I'll rain my glory down. As we praise him, his glory is rained down upon us. Amen? But the word is not like rain outside 
It's R-E-I-G, in. He reigns as we praise him. Amen? Amen. Now, the glory is two kinds. The kind that comes from without and the glory that lives in us. There's two glories. Because sometimes I'll hear people say, well, that's the Old Testament, the glory that was under, that came from outside. It is in the Old Testament, but it's also in the New. Amen? So the glory, he's placed his glory in us. I didn't, I didn't plan to preach a couple of things to you this morning, and it was going to be a toss-up which one was right. But I think you wanted to see. Did you want to see the pictures? That's Gina playing the piano. Want to stand? be sure has everybody here asked christ into their life you know you can attend church but not be saved 
it, it's good for you, but it's then going to get you there. <laughs> you have to say, Lord, come into my life. Jesus, I honor what you've done. You've given your life for me. So just close your eyes for a moment. I want to make sure everybody knows the Lord. If you do not, you have not prayed that prayer, but you allow him to come into your life this morning. I want you to just look up at me and say, I would like to make sure that Jesus is in my heart. Make sure I make eye contact with you. Okay. Nobody's looking at me, so we'll just believe that everybody here knows Jesus. Amen? But in case you d were bashful, you didn't want to look into a woman's eyes. <laughs> Jesus is here to meet you. It's so simple as saying, Jesus, I give my heart. I give myself over into your hands. I accept all you did for me. You don't have to go through the long list of sins unless you makes you feel better. I doubt it will. Because <laughs> if you remember bad things, it never makes you feel better. Amen. Hallelujah. He's forgiven it all. He's washed you in the blood. And I thank you again this morning for the honor of being here. And, and I know I've talked about a lot of things, but uh, I believe the spirit of the Lord was here. Amen. I love you all. Yeah. Proud of you and keep praying for you and thinking of you and like to come ever so often. Amen. Thank you for always opening the doors to me. Praise God. Father, as we, we ask you that the works of the Holy Spirit just be sealed by the power of God this morning. We yield to you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness, your greatness, your power, and your wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you'll just be seated for just a moment, uh, we want to receive our love offering before we close our service. And Amen. Yeah, you can get that later. That's fine. Praise God. Well, Sister Rachel, it's so great to spend the morning with you and uh, hear of the God adventures that he has been taking you on. And next month, you're going on another one. Praise God. But you know, as, as Sister Rachel was mentioning, God is writing a story in all of our lives. And you don't have to wait to do the work of God till you're taken to another nation. He wants you to live it in your own home, in your own neighborhood. Amen. Praise God. Now, if God opens doors for those other things, that, that's wonderful. Um, but, you know, the world needs to see Jesus. And the only way they'll see Jesus is if we're living for him every day where we're at. Amen. Amen. So today, let's just uh, express our love to God for sending Sister Rachel to us. And uh, so this entire offering is going to her and her ministry. And we just believe this will be a part of, of sending her uh, again to the, the Scandinavian countries. You're going to get to Norway, is it? Yeah. In Norway. You've been there before numerous times. Yeah. You're going to get into Sweden as well. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll pray, pray over you um, uh, now as we uh, pray over this offering. Father God, we thank you that we uh, express our love to you and to our sister as we give uh, uh, of, our, of ourselves, our offering to her. Father God, we thank you for preparing the way as she goes. Uh, the angels have charge over her. I, everything will go in order. She will meet uh, every appointment that she is supposed to have. And, Father God, we thank you for strength in, in spirit, soul, and body for her. And, Lord God, we thank you also that as we give, it's given unto us, good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, men give to our bosom. And so, Father God, we thank you for the increase in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Uh, give joyfully. Again, tonight we have prayer service at 6 o'clock. Our midweek service uh, is Wednesday evening at uh, 6.30 p.m., we also have a Bible study on Monday mornings, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday mornings at 930. So we hope that you can join us for these uh, s uh, services. And again, next Sunday evening, we start our special meeting, uh, the financial class, and we hope that you can join us for that. Praise God. Amen. Would you stand up and we'll just speak a blessing over each of you this morning. Amen. God is so good. And as Sister Rachel mentioned on the back table there, uh, they brought some CDs. And so we hope that you will take advantage of those things. 
You know, it's something about uh, allowing the, the presence of God, the, the worship of God, wherever you go, in your car, your home, it sure makes a difference. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time together that we have had. Lord, I believe this was a divine appointment for us. Lord, to hear the things that we have heard, to rejoice, Lord, over your goodness. And, Lord God, the testimony of you will be with us even in time of trouble and will bring us out victoriously. And so we are a people of faith, and we stand strong in you. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you're dismissed. Amen.